Hello, and I'm Richard Frost. I'm the author of Finding Stability in Times of Change. And I'm honoured that it's the first book published by Angelini Publishing. I live in Devon in the UK. I'm married to Jane, who's a vicar, and I'm a lay minister. My professional background was supporting people who experience mental ill health to find or remain in employment. I write a blog and I've written a couple of other books too. It focuses on the miracle of the calming of the storm when Jesus was asleep in the boat and how the storm itself symbolises change, transition and difficulty. The book contemplates the impact the storm had on the disciples and how that reflects our own reaction to difficult times. And finally, it looks at how the calming influence of Christ present in the storm with us helps us to find stability. It includes some very practical suggestions that readers might like to consider in their own lives. After I finished my previous book, Life with St Benedict, that's published by BRF in 2019, I felt there was more to explore from Benedictine spirituality. The three core themes of that approach are listening to God, stability and what's referred to as conversion of life or as I interpret it change. At the time I was also reflecting on how my working career helped people through times of change and then of course along came the pandemic and it all made me think how a book on this whole issue may be very timely. I've also led quiet days on the theme so doing those added to the thinking. At the core of why we find change difficult is, I believe, partly down to the fact that while many aspects of the world around us can change quite quickly, we as human beings change much more slowly. It's rather like a, a pair of cog wheels that can't interlock properly. One's going at a different speed than the other. And this mismatch is often due to the fact that the core characteristics of who we are as individuals can take years to develop. It takes time to change and it's very easy to feel that we're somehow failing if we don't adjust to change as quickly as we or we think other people would want us to. I actually find change quite invigorating. I thrive on it. I've moved home 22 times in my life. But some changes have been tough, that's for sure. I've been through times of significant ill health and bereavements. Like many people, I married, had children, coped with change at work and church, all of which have brought both joy and difficulty. My understanding and expressions of faith have also changed over the years, and that's not always been easy. I think in the early months, there was a lot of fear Life as we knew it changed overnight. And because the pandemic was, was something that was affecting absolutely everybody, that undoubtedly added to the difficulties. Nobody had known anything like it. I think those first few months brought out the best in people. A greater sense of community, of being together in the same boat, in the same storm. The church responded too with online services and increased community provision. But I sense that we've gone back to normal and pre-pandemic normality was not always healthy. Personally though, lockdown provided a surprise. Not only did I start reading more fiction, but I actually started writing it. Even more surprising is that one has turned into a novel called Looking to Move On published by Kronos Publishing, it's a contemporary story of love and loss. And in many ways, it's also about change and how hope can overcome adversity, how storms can be calmed. I've cited many different authors and sources in the book, but the inspiration that is underlying them comes from the rule of St. Benedict, as I mentioned earlier. 
but readers don't need to be familiar with that approach to understand what the book is about. It's also worth me saying that the book includes a number of real life stories from people who have experienced change and how they coped with it, or indeed how they didn't. Time and place, thankfulness and trust, having particular times and a place for prayer, making that part of the daily routine, Cultivating an increased sense of thankfulness also increases our sense of stability. Thanking God for every aspect of every day increases our awareness of God's presence in our lives. Nurturing an increased sense of trust does that also. You know, you've heard people say, oh, just trust God and everything will be fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> does anyone ever tell us actually how to do that? Well, we talk about the wisdom of hindsight. When it comes to trusting God, it's sometimes about having the wisdom of hindsight in advance. What did we learn from God the last time something like this happened? What did God show us about himself in those previous experiences? Well, bedtime reading, it's Anthony Buggeridge's stories about Jennings or Biggles by W.E. Johns. Daytime reading, it's P.D. James, Anne Cleave, Agatha Christie. Christian reading, I wouldn't say I have a favorite author. I tend to go more for the topic, but Henri Nouon is always inspiring. Well, if you really want to know, it's Biggles Fails to Return. <laughs> But I've just started uh, Murder Before Evensong by the Reverend Richard Coles and I've just finished The White Stone by Esther Duvall. <laughs>